Kilo, Juliet 4, Yankee, Zulu, India. You're about a 5-5 five, five here into Florida. Over. Kilo, Juliet 4, Yankee, Zulu, India, 5-9, Santo Domingo. Something you've never seen in the previous few videos is peeling off two of the little screen protectors. Ooh, there's one. Wow, that one's on something serious right there. The FTDX 3000 HF and 6 meter radio by Yesu. Welcome back everyone. This is Eric, KJ4YZI with Ham Radio Concepts. Thanks for stopping back by and we're going to check out another radio. Thanks to Gigaparts who's kind enough to just let me borrow whatever I want at this point. <laughs> and uh, Gigaparts has this radio as well in their inventory of ham radios for the newcomer or somebody who is just way over my head. So previously you've seen a lot of different radios and I've never checked out what you saw like the ICOM 7610 or this FTDX 3000. And a lot of the comments, there's always someone that says, you know, I want something that's got some features but a little bit cheaper. How about show us one of these? And yes, I've never checked out one of these. So I borrowed this. We're going to take a look at it. It's not nothing brand new. Of course, it's been around a little while, but still a great radio for somebody who wants to be a serious contester or somebody that just wants to get into HF. The price is about right for the features and the build quality of this Yesu. So we're going to check this out. I'll try to make a couple of contacts. I don't think it'll be more than one video for this. Um, and uh, we'll show you some of the features on this in case you're interested of something other than what we always talk about. Everybody talks about an ICOM 7300. Everybody talks about a Yaesu 991A. How come we don't talk about the FTDX 3000? A great choice. In their line of the FTDX 1200, 3000, 5000, 5000 MP, you know, this fits in that category. Great for someone who's serious on finding contacts. A ton of different ways to use this for sideband, AM, FM, CW, digital modes, USB connectivity. We'll check it out right now. Okay, before we go into the radio and show you the way the screen looks and the settings and make a couple contacts, give you an overview on the front. So this is not a touch screen. This screen is a really nice looking screen with the ability of having a scope on here, okay? Um, which we'll get to here in a second, like that. But no touch screen. So the buttons here on the front, uh, this, this really comes from a few years ago before we really got into touch screens on radios. And you know what, to be honest, there are people that look at the 7300 or some of the other radios and say, oh, I don't want a touch screen. Okay, maybe you're not a touch screen type guy. Maybe you're a knobs and buttons kind of guy and that could be for you here. So the buttons on the front, like a um, different antenna selection, we'll show you about that. Uh, attenuators, receive filters, AGC. Stuff that you would normally use on the front, like your shift, you know, you can see shift to the right, to the left, your filter width, okay? Also your volume, RF squelch, notch, uh, RF gain or squelch, notch filtering, contour, and stuff like that. Does have a built-in antenna tuner. Here's your tuner here, button. Key jack, quarter inch for a key in the front. Quarter inch jack for headphones. Also an eight pin round mic here. And this is really, really menu driven. So this has a lot more functions in the menu than you'll ever see on the front of the radio. Something like 190 plus menu functions in here for keyers and keyer speed and CW and uh, different things for band edges and uh, you know, a lot of options are in here. Even equalization for your mic and filtering and more are all in the menu. So there's quite an extensive list of, uh, and this kind of reminds me of the 991A, the way that the menu is set up. So on the right, we have, uh, this is where your, contrary to the DX1200, which has a lot more on the screen over here, like frequency and stuff. This has the frequency over here, okay? So easy to see where your frequency is, and it does have Yesu's uh, famous quality build brass insert weighted knob for the VFO. A lot of people like to throw that knob and have a really nice tuning. I mean, that thing's like glass, it really is. Um, and some other buttons over here that are generally used, like quick way to go to 40 meters, 30 meters, 17 meters, 12 meters, stuff like that. Clarifier over here for transmit and receive. Um, and also your, this would be your, you can see on the front, 
your select knob if you want to go through the, you know, it's, it's kind of like uh, roll through the, the menu options, okay? Uh, it doesn't push in or anything, so it's just a, you know, used use as a clarifier or VFOB, as well as uh, menu options here. So VFOA, VFOB, some memory options in the front. Nothing that's too confusing on the front. A lot of the options you're familiar with, but a lot of those options are hidden in this menu, okay? We'll talk about the scope after uh, and some of the things you see and make contacts. Well, let's go to the back first and show you what connections you have on the back to uh, hook this thing up. And before I do that, I probably failed to mention the coverage for this thing. So the general receive coverage is wide, 30 kilohertz to 56 megahertz, everywhere in between, including shortwave and CB radio, and 160 to 6 meters for transmit and all the HF uh, ham bands. So here's a fun fact for you. This radio on the side here has a handle built on, much like almost all radios do nowadays. It's funny because my FT450, Yesu, from way back in the day, that handle on the side was a $34 additional accessory I had to purchase. But now they all come with it. So I guess it's not magical anymore to have an optional handle. It's included with all these radios. It's just a fun fact I've noticed in the last several radios I've checked out. A really solid build quality here. This thing seems really rock solid. I'm afraid to move it because I am borrowing it from Gigaparts, a brand new radio. Thank you again. But I'm just deathly afraid to move it. When I do move it around to give you different angles here, it feels very solid. So on the back, three SO239 jacks. And check it out. This one, number three, can also act like a receive antenna. So those people that have a really, really good receive antenna or something that's omni or focused on a certain frequency, but you want to transmit on your four element Mosley or whatever, you can do that. Receive on one, transmit on the other. Your DC power in, of course. Um, over, let's start, let's see, let's start over here. So we have a USB port, okay? And the USB port is for cat control. I imagine the audio will go over that as well. So if you want to use it for ham radio deluxe, if you want to operate it remotely with software, you could do that as well. Um, cat control with the traditional DB9. Uh, somebody said in a previous video, why are we still putting that on? Well, there's certain applications that you don't have USB or they just want to make sure it's compatible with everybody. Uh, micro tune, going to find out what that is. I haven't read the manual on this thing. I don't want to be an expert. We're doing this together. So I'm going to find out what that micro tune is. Uh, you have a key on the back here, key jack, external speaker, remote, your, uh, I guess that'd be line in and out. So here's your typical uh, six pin mini DIN for radium packet. So a lot of, almost all the ASUS I know of have this on here and that keeps it a standard when you're talking about using it with a packet modem or uh, for different applications, this six pin mini DIN is always there. Your tuner jack, which is I think is an eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, it's an eight pin DIN uh, for a tuner. And then you have a linear, this is pre pretty much your Quadra, your VL1000, the ASU solid state amplifier that goes with that. And I watched another video about somebody and happened to see them talking about this rotator. Now, there's nothing here, but from what I understood, that was going to be for uh, Yesu's lines of rotators that could essentially be operated with this radio all at one shot, but his was blanked out. I'm not sure why that's blanked out. Maybe they never came out with that feature. Maybe it's optional. I don't know. Uh, over here, you have a bunch of uh, RCA jacks for external ALC or IF out, receive out, ground, you know, circuit ground to PTT for keying amplifiers and other things, 13.8 volt out and more. So a lot of these in the manual explain, or I haven't honestly seen these kind of connectors uh, for these different applications uh, for certain things. So I rely on my commenters to teach me. Why would I need a 13.8 volt out? Or why would I need, uh, you know, uh, whatever? The output DC 13.8 volt here. Why would I need that? Let me know in the comments. That'll uh, teach me a thing or two. Maybe you use these all constantly. And make sure you ground your radio here. You always want to ground that straight to a ground. No daisy chains. No uh, ground loops. Don't tie it into the ground on your GFI. Go straight to a ground rod. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to get this scope going because that's what everybody wants is a scope nowadays. We're all scope heads, right? That's what we rely on with ham radio. What did we ever do when we didn't have a scope or a waterfall? My gosh. So I'm on 20 meters. I'm going to push the scope button, okay? And that looks a little bit different than it would out of the box. And that's because I went into menu and I looked at the 
scope mode here you know you could set that you know hit select and change this to the way it was like this uh, that's how it looked before you can do it this way and it kind of shows you 50 kilohertz on each side of your center frequency and the action that you're seeing so that gives you an advantage to see on a wide section of the band where there might be activity um, a little bit smaller than what you would see on today's radios with the, like the uh, DX101, FT DX101. My gosh, that thing is like a TV. And it shows you all kinds of stuff, right? But we're going back before SDR technology, something that will appeal to a lot of people as a general HF radio that can be almost contest level, okay? So uh, we'll go back into menu. I'm going to change that. I'm going to change that scope to, let's set it this way and see what happens. All right, so that's like a kind of like a waterfall. And if you push scope again, <clears throat> it'll give you a bigger screen, and then you can adjust the sensitivity and the color of it to really narrow down and see in that scope where the activity might be. Okay, if you push scope again, now you can see you have your audio waveform over here uh, in your filter width, like 2.8 kilohertz, and uh, what you would see as somebody's talking. I, I love these analog-looking VU meters or I, should, I shouldn't say VU meter. Power meter, your needle. I know I'm already getting people typing comments. I call it a VU meter in my head, but yes, it's a power meter. But you can see it on here and some of the options like the attenuator on, 6 dB down, 12 dB down, 18 dB down, or off, right? You can see those right here. Uh, noise blanker on, off. AGC, turn it on fast, right? So. Let's see if I can find, I want to hear how the speaker sounds. Sounds nice. Top firing speaker over here. Sounds good. I mean, it's, it's loud enough where you could hear what you want to hear. That's your RF gain here. Okay. Or you could set that to squelch, the inner knob. Right. Shift to the right, shift to the left. Filter width, right? See how it narrows down here? 2400. 4000, whoa, whoa. That's pretty neat. I can go 4000, wow, 4000 wide. Normally like 3000. That'd be good for shortwave or AM, you know? Wow, that makes it a lot better. Yeah. See, it pinches it when you go narrow. All right, Montana. Okay, so um, let's see. I'll make a contact here in a minute. I'm going to go through the menu and look at a couple other things. So scope settings, uh, let's see what else we got. We have, you know, it tells you the, the topic you're in, you know, the category scope. And then you keep going. There's a lot of scope settings for different bands, okay? Like the span, see? If you want, we're on 20 meters, so we'll go to 14 megahertz, span 500 kilohertz, so let's set it to, let's go to 20. All right, go back into here. Let's see, what we got CW dial step, and we have, uh, so that's for tuning. You know, see, see what I mean? The step size just for sideband or, you know, normally, uh, in certain radios, we just nowadays it's touchscreen. You tap on the frequency over here, and then you can change the step size. You go in the menu for this one, all right? So we have uh, transmit audio parametric EQ for uh, bandwidth, level, frequency. We also have some, let's see, general transmit, you know, tuner select. So internal or external tuner. If you really want to use that external tuner, you can. Uh, Vox, emergency frequency, what else we got? RIDI options for digital data or digital modes, display, the backlight, you know, my call sign, all that kind of stuff. So a lot of options. I'm going to leave this just the way it is. Get out of there. And I'm going to try to make a couple contacts real quick. Let me hook the mic up and make a couple contacts and just get a couple reports. Now, let me hit the tuner button and see what happens. I want to see how long this tuner takes. Oh my, that's all of 10 seconds. Hmm, do it again. 
Yeah, so I guess it runs the same tune pattern every time and tries to find the best match. But that's, that's 10 seconds right there. Interesting. Interesting. Then we can go to VFOB here. So uh, let's see, VFOB. Okay, here we are. So see we're on receive VFOB or receive VFOA. Uh, and it seems that all your VFO options are right here in this slice. You know, split operation, um, you know, whatever you need for your VFO options are right here. Your mode of operation right here could be changed. You know, we're in upper sideband, indicators up on here. So you lower uh, upper side CW, RIDI lower side, data lower side, AM. Uh, very good day to you. Name is Eric. The call is KJ4YZI. Just testing out a uh, FTDX3000 down here in Florida. You got a pretty good signal here in my receive, and uh, somebody just about a, K, a kilohertz up from you. But other than that, you're uh, you're a good solid 59 down here into Florida. Over. Okay, very good, fine business. Yeah, we're just running 100 watts here. High gain, nine band vertical, and uh, just, uh, like I said, just, just playing with this thing, and uh, you sounded good on this new speaker here. So I wanted to call out and make the contact. I won't hold it, I'll let you make more. But thanks for coming back to me, and 7-3 from Florida, KJ4YZI. Five nine now. Hello, CQ, CQ, CQ. This is Kilo Juliet for Yankee Zulu India. KJ four YZI calling CQ and standing by. Kilo four Bravo Alpha India. Kilo four Bravo Alpha India. Okay, good signal. Hello, name is Eric. KJ four YZI in Florida. Over. <laughs> I'm in Columbus, Georgia. Columbus, Georgia. My name is John, J-O-H-N, over. Okay, John, that time you're a solid 5'9", really good signal. And it's funny you say that, that I was uh, that loud. Um, I'm just uh, trying out a new uh, FTDX 3000 Yesu, just giving a couple shouts out. Down here in Florida, using a 9-band high-gain vertical that's uh, just about ground-mounted. Nothing more than 100 watts and a stock microphone, over. Okay, very good. Very good. I think I had one of those. Somebody would give me and never put it up. Um, I, you know, I've used various antennas and wires and, and uh, landed on this high gain, and I've loved it ever since. I hated verticals until I got this thing. It just, just works every time. So I have quite a bit of antennas around, and uh, I stick with this one, uh, and it seems that it works good. So this DX3000 is different for me. Uh, I've been playing with other ones lately, uh, DX101D from ASU and the 7610 from ICOM. And this one uh, sounds good, looks good, uh, just a little uh, different than what I'm used to, over. Oh, it's terrible. Well, that option always exists, I guess. There's always uh, that possibility. I was out jet skiing a couple weekends ago, and a uh, uh, guy that normally comes out with me always wanted to rag on my 90s jet ski that I rebuilt and uh, had to constantly brag about having his brand new one. And he decided to go out with me, 
and we made it about a thousand meters and it broke down and he was upset so I guess brand new things can't break down ever uh, they can <laughs> and sometimes do and, and that's a shame but that's the nature of uh, these things particularly uh, electronic things uh, and, uh, we, rep we replace them. Yeah, Roger. Well, I have uh, currently a 7300 ICOM paired up with its twin 9700. Um, various other different radios. I have an FT450 in the closet. I have a couple Chinese uh, QRP radios. And, um, you know, handhelds in different modes and digital things here or there. So, uh, you know, this hobby is entertaining and uh, keeps me busy all the time. And I think it was B-A-R, a K-4-B-A-R. My memory doesn't work today. K-J-4-Y-Z, yeah, your call again? And the last letter of my call is the same as yours, K-4-Bravo-Alpha-India. I don't know what it is about B-A-R and B-A-I, but uh, I've uh, had the people hear me, hear me say K-4-B-A-R for years when I'm trying to say K-4-B-A-I. Uh, what part of Florida are you in, Eric? Uh, presently Vero Beach, Florida, if you know where that's at, probably about 60 or 70 miles south of Cape Canaveral, over. Roger, yeah. I know Florida pretty well. Uh, I had a lot of vacations there, and I, I've been to the, um, Miami Amory and the Peyton Hamcation. I've done, uh, mobile work in uh, many Florida QSO parties, so I've been through most of the counties. Uh, anyway, it must be the perfect distance for us on 20 meters today, Eric. Uh, I'm looking for stations in South America right now. That's why my name is for way. So I'll say 73 and look for some more South Americans. AJ 4 is that I, K4 BAI. Okay, very good, my friend. You're welcome to park here. I just decided to. I mean, I don't know if you were here. I, I was calling if the frequency was open uh, and didn't hear anybody, so I called CQ, but uh, sorry if uh, somehow I mixed in there. But. Yeah, you're welcome to stay right here because I didn't hear anybody on my end. 7-3, my friend. I'll be jumping out of here. KJ4YZI. God bless. Have yourself a good day. Oh, I have not been using frequency, and I won't use it now. You can keep it if anybody wants to call you. I, uh, I'm doing search and pounce at the moment. 73, KJ4YZI, K4BAI. Okay. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay, I'll make one CQ, and then I'll probably pack it up if there's no one there. Take care. Thanks for the call and really good signal. Uh, and this is KJ4YZI, Kilo Juliet 4, Yankee Zulu India, in Florida calling CQ, CQ, CQ 20 meters. KJ4YZI standing by. All right, so I made a couple contacts here. That guy was in Georgia. He sounded really good. Uh, and I haven't messed with really any of the settings. I played with the notch and contour for a minute. But uh, there's really nothing in the menu that I went through that was out of the box. I'm not even sure if uh, the mic gain's up high enough or what. I didn't even really mess with it. I mean, I guess, uh, okay, there's the mic gain there. So I was at, what, somewhere around here before I hit the knob. Um, and I guess I'm assuming I'm at a high power. So it's a, it's a good radio. It sounds really good and um, not too big for what you'd want as far as uh, quality and build. Uh, Bigger than my ICOM 7300 and 9700. Bigger than the Yaesu FT991, but uh, smaller than something like a DX5000. So if you're interested in this, Gigaparts has them, of course. Everybody send a message or a comment and say, hey, Gigaparts, thank you for letting Eric borrow all this stuff because without them, I'd have no video material. So thanks, everybody, at Gigaparts, and that's why I continue to shop from them. Not because they loan me gear, but because when I go there and meet them and hang out with them at HamFest, these guys are just cool as hell. They're, they're awesome. They're down to earth. They're hams like me. And it's just cool to have someone to talk to there. It's cool to call and pick up the phone. Oh, hey, Eric, what's going on? I like it. So check out Gigaparts for this radio and many others you've seen on videos. 73 KJ4YZI.